on today's Apple Daily. Did Apple just vintage your iMac? Linux on Apple Silicon M1? And what will the Apple Silicon update cycle look like going forward? Plus, Notification Squad. For the latest Apple news, rumors, and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. Thanks, Siri. And if you want all of that stuff, all you need to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing, and you'll join our Notification Squad, and that way you can get a shout out at the end of the next show. Vintage IMAX. Apple has added a number of its iMacs to the Apple Vintage products list this week, including up to the mid-2015 Retina 5K iMac models and mid-2014 21.5-inch iMacs. There is a little confusion about what this actually means, as in 2018, Apple went from no longer offering servicing on these vintage products on the list to extended repairs on select models, which I think in reality means as long as we still have the parts. While this now means that the iCave is produced on a vintage machine, not the G4 over there, but 2013 pre-Retina iMac that uh, I have sitting just here, it was never likely to return to the Apple Store for service anyway. However, it does make me wonder if I should really start considering that Mac Mini that I've had my eye on for a while. Of course, we're expecting the iMac to be relaunched with an Apple Silicon heart, and most likely the first redesign of the new generation of Macs, so maybe I should hold on. More on the new iMacs later. Linux on Apple Silicon M1. Back in the, but what else can we run on Apple's new superchip department, developer Hector Martin, or Marcan on social media, has launched a Patreon-funded project to port Linux to Apple Silicon. Having previously ported the OS to run on PlayStation 3 and 4, if there's anyone that can do this, Martin is probably the guy for the job. And he's not just planning to get it to run, but he wants it in a fully formed version that can be used as a daily driver. This, along with the prospect of Windows not getting official support for Apple Silicon, makes me wonder. While it's almost the exact opposite of what we understand it to be right now, could running unsupported operating systems on Apple Silicon become the hackintosh of the future? Seems unlikely that trying to run Apple's ARM-specific OS on non-Apple systems will be popular if at all possible, but perhaps other boot or virtual machine options on Apple Silicon could be where that energy finds a home. And what will the Apple Silicon update cycle look like going forward? Given that the world is finally seeing what we'd all been expecting since August, that Apple Silicon, even in its most basic reduced power level version in the MacBook Air, base 13 inch MacBook Pro and base iMac is pretty stunning, I think what the refresh cycle might look like will be important for people when they're deciding when or when not to buy new Macs. Sites like Mac Rumors have had buyer's guides in the past that were tracking each product when they were last updated, how long it was between product updates, when Intel had new chips coming out, and when appropriate graphics hardware was on the way from AMD or Nvidia. My hope is that these will be much more simple going forward. Because of the way that Apple is putting their silicon together, I firmly believe that the Firestorm high performance cores and iStorm efficiency chips are the same in all of a given generation's SOCs. Now, I could be wrong, but it seems like that is the case. Two Firestorm and four iStorm chips in an iPhone and in the iPad Air's A14, four and four in the M1, and presumably the same for the A14X for the iPad Pro, and potentially eight and four, eight power cores and four efficiency cores in the M1X that we're expecting to see power in the first iMacs and higher powered MacBook Pros. Of course, these aren't the only parts, there are also the graphics chips, but they again seem to be assembled of multiple individual cores, but they again seem to be assembled of multiples of the same core around that unified memory structure. Because Apple is creating families of SoCs based around the same cores as well, scaling should be relatively easy. With two to four SoC styles, they should be able to cover pretty much the whole range of Macs. That should allow them to iterate annually and update every single Mac every single year. Just think about that compared to what we've had in recent years when Apple's been waiting for Intel chips to be ready, seen issues with Intel's roadmap where the power consumption had to increase in order to increase the performance, then you were hitting thermal limits, delays happened due to lack of progress, all stuff that has been caused by outside companies but caused Apple huge problems. Now they have their own industrial design team creating the new Mac enclosures as always, with new thermal envelopes and a chip team designing the SOCs to fit perfectly within the TDP of the cases because they know exactly what it is 
before they try to put the chip in it. Plus, they're only having to create two processor cores annually, the Firestorm and iStorm core, and then they can slot as many into the die as they need for each platform. Of course, there are other parts of the SoC, but the designers almost have a kit of Apple features that they can just add where they need it for that year's feature set and that device. So I think that Apple will split their product cycle into the new consumer level Max with the M1, M2 and M3 system on a chips towards the end of each year around iPhone season and then a pro focused event in March with the M1X, M2X for example, as well as the A14X going into the iPads Pro and maybe even a super powered release cycle around WWDC each year in June, which has traditionally been a software focused event, but it has also been where Mac Pros have always debuted, along with potentially the iMac Pros to be released each year at WWDC. Then we just rinse and repeat with the previous year's SOCs going into new SE style Macs, perhaps an iMac SE, but almost certainly a MacBook or MacBook Air SE and a Mac Mini SE. Just as they have with iPhone SE and Apple Watch SE, and let's be honest, the base iPad could really just be called the iPad SE because it has a couple of year old chip. Mac SE models would give an awesome value point that is still unique to Apple in its optimization and design. Annual updates across the board is what I think we'll be getting. But do you think it's plausible? Let me know down in the comments. And finally, we have a couple of Notification Squad members joining today, Tinashe Zimunya and Dr. Amit K. Rana. Thank you so much for joining the Notification Squad. I really do appreciate you guys. And if you want a shout out at the end of the next video, then make sure that you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and make sure that you let me know in the comments that you've done it. Otherwise, I won't know and I won't be able to shout you out. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.